You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. You know what? I'm I'm gonna drop that. It's not. It's not happening. Uh, I tr- I went for it, and it just it just didn't feel right. Uh, welcome everybody to the TV Guidance Counselor Halloween Special, or Halloween Two, as uh, last year we did a Halloween Special, and this is in fact a treat for you because I know I said there would not be a Halloween Special this year, and I truly believed I wouldn't do one, and then I got an idea. So last year I went solo and I went through my Halloween episode grid of the Excel sheet of all the Halloween specials and episodes that I put together over many years of research, which if you would like a copy, still uh, email me at tvguidancecounselor@gmail.com and I'd be happy to get you one. And I thought I can't really do any, I can't do the same thing again. And then I had a brilliant idea, if I do say so myself, we would watch a made for TV movie, 1985's The Midnight Hour, a movie I first saw saw in 1985 when it first aired it's very 1985 it's funny it's stupid there are some truly scary moments in it especially for a five-year-old and i watch it every year on halloween it is a tradition in the reed household and i also thought i would get a returning guest now back at episode 100 the clip show i asked you guys to uh email me connect with me somehow facebook whatever tell me your favorite guest favorite episode and this guy came up frequently it is mr lamont price for his third time on the show and uh, fittingly enough, Lamont had not seen The Midnight Hour. Lamont and I share a love of all things 80s and horror movies. And so I got Lamont over here. We are, I don't realize we're like two weeks early for Halloween, but I want you guys to have plenty of time to enjoy this. Hunt down The Midnight Hour. Which, as uh, as of this speaking, it's not a writing. As of right now, uh, the whole movie is on YouTube, so that may change in uh, in the immediate couple of days, as YouTube is wont to do. But you can watch it on YouTube, and uh, this gives you plenty of time to watch it in, in time for Halloween. So what we did was, Lamont came over, we discussed Halloween TV, and then we started watching the movie, and at every commercial break, we kind of check back in, and I get Lamont's reaction. We talk about the movie. It's a little bit different format, uh, but I had a lot of fun doing it, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. I think you will. So get a pillowcase full of candy, shove your face in it, and listen to this. It's not even this week's. This is an extra episode. Listen to this year's Halloween special of TV Guidance Counselor with returning guest, Mr. Lamont Price. By popular demand, Mr. Lamont Price, how are you, sir? Hey, uh, this is easily the first popular demand that I've ever been honored with. And You've I never been a popular you. demand? I don't think so. I don't think people like me very much. But I think you're a very popular repeat guest. Ah, well, I'm glad to have been given the honor, and I'm happy to be back. This is definitely one of my favorite podcasts. Oh, well, so. thank you. Thank you. I know you're being honest because you said one of and not favorite. Oh, well, listen, I got a few. I mean, I won't yeah. name them. No, but... I understand. I understand. Yeah. And this, this is... is most definitely <laughs> one of many. Without question, my favorite podcast. <laughs> tape called... North of Boston. Yes, Tape yes. in Stoneham. <laughs> yes, I think that that makes sense. And this is the, the last time we were here, I hadn't built this weird little studio room yet. So this is like slightly more professional. Couple of, the last time I was here, the studio was a little different. The studio was great. You didn't have the Charlie Brown Christmas clock. Cuckoo clock, yeah. That I'm going to steal. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, we have a clock that we bought last Christmas. That's uh, Snoopy's house. And every hour on the hour, Snoopy comes out and it plays the Charlie Brown theme. Yes. Yeah. And I would never get sick of it. Yeah. It, I thought I wouldn't. Weirdly, I haven't either. So it's, uh, and it's, and it's almost Christmas again. But it's Halloween, and that's why you're yes, here. Uh, yes, you yes. share a love of, of horror movies and Halloween that is equal to my own, I would say. I start, here's one, for me, like Halloween starts now for most of America. Yeah. For me, somewhere around August 15th is when I give up on summer. Yeah. And I start feeling Halloween. Oh, yeah. So Halloween for me, it's like, 
I'm the guy who people go, oh, it's too early. And I'm like, never. No. It's, it's never, never too, too early. early. It's never too early for Halloween. I want more and more. And I get sad. It's what? October, what? 12? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now? It makes me sad to know that it's almost over. Yeah, we're getting there and it's going to be done. And then yeah. you got to go into Thanksgiving, which is not that fun. Mm. And Christmas is fun. but I then, like Christmas time. Don't get me wrong. I love yeah. all that stuff. But Halloween. It's the best. Halloween's the number one. So when you were growing up, what was your trick-or-treating? First of all, what, what how old were you the last year you went trick-or-treating? Uh, <laughs> so I assume you, like me, had a growth spurt early. Look, the, okay. There's a couple of answers to that. The last time I went trick-or-treating legitimately for my own personal enjoyment of trick-or-treating... Yeah. I was like 15, maybe. <laughs> which is a little 16, old. 16, which yeah. is... But I had my younger brother with me. Oh, good excuse. So it was like, hey, but I had, I also had a bag, and I have to bring him, so I might as well get some candy. Right. Um, and then my, my younger sister got to the age where she wanted to go all the time. So I think, honestly... And I didn't collect candy on these runs. Right. 20 and 21. Okay. All yeah. right. But did you take some when you went home to of check course. their candy? See, my sister was adorable, still is, but at the time, I mean, you know, cute kid. Yeah. So she not only got candy, she got, like, money. Money? Yeah, she got money. Like People dollars? People gave her money, yes. That's weird. I don't think that's uncommon. I think if you have a cute kid, especially when she was, like, two or three. Here's some money. she have a princess costume or something. Yeah. People would, oh, my God, and they'd go into their pocketbooks and they'd give her money. I've actually never heard of that on Halloween. I'm telling you. Maybe man. I just wasn't a cute little girl. Uh, I don't know. I I was kind of a cute little girl, yeah, but not one of adorable. We had we had families that instead of candy would give us pennies. Huh? Why? What's that about? I don't know. They were just like, I don't want to give you candy. Here's pennies. That was like the only time money came. Did into you play. throw the pennies back at the house? I never did. I wasn't I like was. a I wasn't like a hell night hellraiser prankster type Halloween. I was very I was very serious about the trick or treating. Were you a pillowcase person? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Listen, there's a there's rules to this. Yeah. If you go with a traditional trick-or-treat bag, I will not shame you. I will only assume that you're not experienced enough in Halloween yeah, to understand. Yeah, plastic pumpkin. No. You had a... It was all mapped out. Mm-hmm. You knew what houses to hit. Yep. You knew what houses to try to avoid. You knew which houses sucked based on past experiences. Good and plenty houses. Yeah. Ugh, forget that. But the best house I ever went to was probably the creepiest house. And I, I grew up in Dorchester. Right. So, like, Dorchester's like an area where a few streets are amazing and they look very suburban. There's, yeah. There's a couple of streets that you go, I There's don't know. some big Victorian houses, like yeah. the old money Boston houses. Yeah. Then there's a lot of, like, triple-decker, three fam- three apartments houses. But yeah. then there's some, like, apartment building streets. Well, you know, it, I mean, I grew up a lot in apartment buildings, but there were certain streets, houses or no houses, right. where you're just like, eh. But a lot of it... I'm saying, this is aside from Halloween, it's not as bad as the news yeah. makes it out to be, but this one year we're going, and it was me, my best friends, like some cousins, and my brother, and uh, two things happened. One is those Victorian houses, you know, were uh, a lot of white people lived in the oh, streets, yeah. yeah. so I remember my brother, you know, at the time he might have been, I don't know, six, seven, maybe a little older. And I remember him saying at one house, he's like, man, there's a lot of white people on the street. <laughs> What's happening to this neighborhood? And we still had it. We hadn't gotten our candy yet from that house. And right. I looked at it. I was like, just, just get, Did that, I don't make this kid. comment after we leave. Yeah, you gotta. But the next house we went to was easily the best house I've ever been to, trick or treating. Okay. And the house I would never go back to. Because we go to this house, guy opens the door, trick or treat. Mid twenties, maybe. Okay. Most welcoming guy. Oh my God, you guys look great in your costumes. Come on in. We have candy all right. So he had candy everywhere, all full size bars, everything you want. Not only did he have full size bars, he insisted that we help ourselves. Okay. So we're just, you know. And then I look around the house a little bit and I see no furniture, right? And a bunch of other 20-somethings just kind of hanging out. And they looked very like, you know, join us. They had that look to them. Culty. Yeah. And then the guy was like, man, you guys, we're new to the neighborhood. And we just like making friends and meeting new people. And anytime you guys want to come over and hang out at our house, you are more than welcome. 
And my buddy Charles, he said, and I quote, fuck that shit. That's the correct and response. Then he took off. Yeah. And then I remember after he said that, that's when it rang a bell that this yeah. was not the place to be. And I grabbed like five more candy bars. Yeah. And I just I chucked up the deuces. That no one wants to be the Dudley of their friends. Nobody. You do not want to be the victim Wanna of be. Captain Towel or Neptune King of the Sea because <laughs> a nice friendly twenty something oh. has invited you over whenever you want. Yeah. How many kidnapping episodes were on different strokes? Uh they had at least two. Yeah. Well, a molestation and then the one where um where Kimberly and... Oh yeah, Kimberly there's two. Yeah, yeah Kimberly, Kimberly got kidnapped. Oh, and Sam Sam got, Sam kidnapped, got kidnapped. Which that one was the da- they had to make the kidnapper sympathetic. And his son, who who apparently looked like Sam, had died. And so he kidnapped him and was fooling his wife, being like, no, he's our new son. That's right. And she was like, where did he come from? Don't worry about it. It was like, he's a 10-year-old. Just take him. Those Sam episodes were the ones where they tried to sort of like transition away from Arnold. Because he wasn't cute anymore. Yeah. And he's like a photographer. And he'd show up to give Sam advice. Sage advice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not taking advice from Arnold. I'm not taking advice from Arnold No way. No way. There was, of course, Halloween in the in the city in the suburbs was the time that you heard all the the terror tales like that. Of uh, this house has you know poison candy or like a kid died at that house and that kind of thing. I read a, I, I saw a documentary on Netflix about the origins of that. Cropsy, I forget exactly what it, it was like. A, it was a few urban legends. Yeah, and one, the candy once was started because a guy's kid went trick or treating and that happened to the kid. And it turns out was the that dad, the right? dad poisoned his yeah, kid. Yeah, it was Munchausen syndrome. Yeah. yeah, and so that kind of made it, oh my God, we got to make sure when that's the only time it ever happened. Yeah, yeah, but all of a sudden, everybody's terrified of it. Yeah. Would your parents check all your candy? Would they insist uh, on checking I, be- I think so, but I I think after a while, they were just like, this is stupid. Just, yeah, nothing's going to happen. Just eat it. I, would, I got uh, a local pizza place in our town, had one of those big wall-sized maps of our city. Right. And so I noticed one day that they were getting a new one and I asked for the old one. So I had a street by street map of the city and that's what I used to plot my Halloween route. Okay. And our house was kind of in the middle of the town. So what I would do is I had my parents drop me off at the edge of town with a king size pillowcase. I walked that side of town, stopped at our house, dropped that bag off, got a fresh bag, walked to the other side of town which where my grandparents lived and then they picked me up there. And I would ration that candy till February. Smart. At least. At least February. Smart. One piece a night. Smart. Was there a candy that was like your that was your thing? Um, I mean, with candy, it's like Snickers, Twix, okay. Whatchamacallits, oh, the most yeah. underrated candy bar in yeah. the game. You rarely see a fun um, size whatchamacallit. Yeah. Uh you know, the, like for me, if you don't want me to like you, good and plenty is a good way yeah. to do it. Which are licorice uh, medicine. Uh, Smarties. Yeah. I will throw shit at your house. Yeah. Um, I had a conversation about this the other day, too. Somebody, I was talking to this chick who's trying to make me think that mallow cups should be taken seriously. I don't think the mallow cups Halloween. are that bad. They're not a Halloween candy. Well, first off, I don't like marshmallows. Okay. All right. But there you go. Yeah. But see, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you shouldn't eat mallow cups. My point was, on the Super Bowl of candy... Yeah, you want peanut butter cups. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You don't want mallow cups. Eat, ever... them on, eat them on November 1st. Yeah. I don't care. That's a, that's a Thanksgiving candy. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you know what I never liked is that maple candy. It looks like chocolate, but it's maple. I'm trying to... They'd be like in the shape of turkeys and pilgrims. I don't... Yeah, it was... Ring about... You lucked out. You had a good childhood. If you How do you those. feel about... Um... Squirrel nuts. Squirrel nut zippers? Uh, the, those, the yeah, rectangle? Yeah. yeah, those are made at Neko, uh, which is in Revere now. Oh, wait, Neko in... wafers? No, no. No, those Not are terrible. Halloween. Not on Halloween. But Neko was based in Cambridge, uh, in East Cambridge and in Central Square, which is why it always had that weird sickly sweet smell when we were kids if you ever went there. And they moved to Revere yeah, since Central then. Central Square was sickly sweet? Yeah. Yeah, it, mm. you would because there was a candy factory there, okay. and you would get in a Central Square and you'd smell and you'd be like, "Oh, candy!" But then it had this like weird, like after smell. <laughs> you were like, "Oh, it was disgusting." Eat this. <clears throat> yeah, but they made uh, squirrel nut zippers there, which are like a peanut butter taffy, basically old fashioned candy like Mary Jane's mint juleps. Mary Jane's, yeah, that's... yeah, and that kind of stuff. I did you ever have anyone who gave out homemade treats like candy apples or any cookies or anything like that? 
I don't remember exactly what was given out, but I do remember there were times where people would give you stuff in like their own bags that they made yeah, and yeah. never touch that stuff. Never touch it. And no. which is so bad because I'm like, they did a nice sweet thing that actually is probably more in the spirit of neighborly, you know, like, oh. That's true. But, that, but then I'm like, but no got, way. If, if I don't know the, if I knew the family. Yeah. Yeah. But if I didn't know them, they should know better than to give that. They should know Halloween yeah. you don't give that out. No. Without, you got to shake everybody's hand in the neighborhood before yeah. you start giving out your own. Yeah. We made this today. Yeah. You can't, no. not on Halloween. No. Go to the it's, store. Yeah. Go to CVS. Get the get peanut some Twix, butter. Yeah. Get the peanut butter cups and you come back That's to That's what me. people want. Yeah. What was the best costume you ever had? Okay. I can pretty much run down most of my costumes. Now, where would you go? Was there a specific place you'd go to get costumes as kids? No. Nah, Hardware store, drugstore, whatever. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the old costumes with the plastic hard Ben Cooper that or would, Collegeville, yeah, with yeah. the trash bag body. Yeah, it yeah. Would, it would rip and yep. you'd stop bleeding, but you didn't, you you trudged Oh, on. they'd cut your face. Yeah, yeah, all the time. It'd split right now. And yeah. you couldn't, you didn't cry. You were like, I, I gotta, I gotta stick it out. The worst part of those masks was the rubber band, the the mm. little the little bump you have right above your ear. Yeah, they would just dig into that, and that was yeah. that was terrible. Yeah, I was Superman, first grade. Okay, second grade. Collegeville Ben Cooper plastic mask. All that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I remember first grade. I have very little recollection of second grade. I don't know why, but first grade, I remember. I went as Superman mm-hmm. to the you know had the party. At school, yep. And some kid came in with a mask that I couldn't handle. It was, it was too scary. It was creepy. And he chased me around the room, and I'm running from him in my Superman costume. It's not very super. And for the rest of the year, they called me Super Chicken. Nice, <laughs> nice. I, 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 I it's warranted. It. It's warranted. I deserved it. Yeah, yeah. So I was Superman. You came as Superman. Uh, you left as Clark Kent. Oh, definitely. I, uh, I, I was the Hulk one year. Same kind yep. of costume. Yep. Um, I like being a vampire. That was fun. That's a fun Fi- one. Vampire was Makeup. fun. Makeup. Yep. Yep. Junior high. Freddy Krueger. Yeah, classic. All right, now listen to this. Halloween day, I think I was in seventh grade, right? The school had the seventh and eighth grade class go to the auditorium, and they showed us Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Yeah, and you've mentioned this to me before. Yeah. This is insane. It's ridiculous. It, the school clearly didn't care about us. Yeah. Inner city school. They sh- and that wasn't the first movie they showed us that was a little question. I mean, aside from the violence, there's breasts all in that movie. Oh, yeah. Well, how about this? One <clears> year they showed us, like, you know how the end of the school year, there's that week where you still have you just to just don't care, yeah. They showed us RoboCop. They showed us uh, 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 Return of the Living Dead. Right in school. In school. Now, now to your breast comment, I've seen the movie before. Yeah, it's my favorite zombie movie of all time. It is very good. And so the part where trash gets yeah. naked in the cemetery tonight, tonight. we'll make love to it. Yeah, SSQ. hottest zombie I've ever seen. Uh the teacher goes. The teacher says, "No, no, no," and fast forwards through that part. And I, I'd seen it. And I'm like, yeah. no, nah, that's where the titties are. That's the best part. That's where the titties are, Mr. Moulton. What do you think? This is a fucking costume? Yeah. Trash taking off her clothes again. Here's it. And, the and, then then and then they, you know. There's not actually full frontal in that scene because she's wearing what they call the Barbie doll device. You mean on the, yeah. the crotch? Yeah. They actually have a latex piece that makes her crotch look like a Barbie doll because they didn't want to get an X rating. You know what? They could have just used a crotch and said they did that. Yeah. But I have... Uh, Linnea, I, Linnea Quigley. Linnea Quigley. Yeah. I'm sorry to say this, but I have photos in a in a Fangoria in a Cine Fantastique magazine of them like making that appliance. Oh, man. Very weird, and nobody notices. So what was the? Oh, so yes, you Nightmare have, Nightmare Street. Street Part Three: The Dream Freddy Warriors. Kruger. Dream Warriors, probably the best one. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sitting with my two best friends, right? And in front of me was this, was this girl named Shanita, and uh. Very attractive young lady. Oh, we all know Shanita. Oh, yeah. She was great. So I I had the gloves mm-hmm. and everything. And there was a tense part coming up. I looked at my friends like, and they were like, you got to do it. Yeah. You got to do it. And on the dent, I did ha like that. And she hit the ceiling. And then when she came down, she turned around and she just started punching me. Yeah. 
for like 10 minutes. I think and that's I the never felt response. a thing. Yeah. I do it again. Yeah. She didn't talk to me for six months. And you've been married for 10 years now. Oh, I love her. Yeah. She's my uh, my favorite wife. She's but my I, second and fourth wife. I bet you were the absolute hero of all your friends. Oh, me. they loved Oh, yeah. my God. My yeah. friends were. Yeah. Well, she was punching me. I was laughing so hard. I didn't hear. I didn't feel anything. Well, the other thing is in seventh grade, physical contact is physical contact. Yeah, she's touching me. She's right? kissing you or punching you. It doesn't matter. She's touching me, baby. So to the to the sort of conceit of this episode that I that I thought we'd do something new because uh, I did a Halloween special last year where we just talked about you know things you can watch right. is uh, we're gonna watch a movie and we're gonna kind of check in on the commercial breaks and and get your reaction. This is a movie made for TV movie. I've seen it many times. I watch it every year. It's called The Midnight Hour. It's from 1985. And I was surprised, actually, that you had not seen it. I had not seen it. And I went, when you told me about it, I looked up, looked it up online. And the cast is just... It's outstanding. It's amazing. LeVar Burton. Yes. Sherry Belafonte. Sherry Belafonte. Yeah. It's, it's an all-star cast. Yeah. So TV movies are a lost art. I think that they were a huge deal. And actually, one on the old Secret Menu show, I used to do my live show, we had a thing called TV Casualty with things that scared you on TV. And Lamont did one for Don't Go to Sleep. Don't Go to Sleep. Yes, with uh, which was a terrifying made-for-TV movie. And for me, that ending was... Oh, yeah. It's a, a ghost child sort of crawls up the bed on this woman, and you think she's dead. She says, hi, mommy. Yeah. And then my parents are like, lights out. Yeah. I was like, no, no, There's no. a lot of terrifying made-for-TV movies, especially in the 70s and early 80s. You have uh, um, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark and Bad Ronald and, and all these movies, but they were all aimed at adults. And The Midnight Hour that we're going to watch is is sort of a... It's midway between sort of Return of the Living Dead and The Breakfast Club. It's like a teen comedy, but there's some truly terrifying Wait a minute, who else? Like, I saw some other names on the cast list. Like, oh, yeah, there's people right you'd now. recognize. I think um, uh, John Astin is in it. Yeah, okay. Um, there's, there's, some, there's some names and, and faces you'll recognize. It was uh, directed by a guy who went on to, still works today, directs a lot of episodes of like Under the Dome and Lost. And uh, the guy that wrote it wrote a lot of made-for-TV movies. Uh, and, and also wrote uh, one of my favorite Christmas made for TV movies, A Smoky Mountain Christmas with Dolly Parton mm. and Kenny Rogers, which does feature a witch in it. Smoky Mountain is yes. a song, right? Smoky, Smoky Mountain, Mountain Christmas. Mountain Christmas. Did you have, so we uh, often talk about like Halloween specials and stuff. Right. Are there things that you need to watch every year now that it's not Halloween if you don't watch like Great Pumpkin or? Great Pumpkin is probably anything Peanuts. Yeah. Peanuts, the, Charles Schultz, let me tell you. The man knew me before I was born somehow yeah. because he incorporates jazz in a lot of his, mm -hmm. most of his works, which I love. I love a big jazz fan and he hits the holidays hard. And from what I know of Charles Schultz, uh, I've somebody t tweeted me once that kind of knew Charles Schultz yeah. and said that basically Charles Schultz was Charlie Brown yeah, and that he was in, oh, and they tweeted me a picture of him as a kid. I don't know if I still have it, but that was definitely Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like right down to the yellow page. Right down it was it was insane. It was yeah. insane. He was a very depressed dude. Yeah. Although I will say there's really diminishing returns once you get past Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. So obviously well, Okay, Christmas I go back and forth between Christmas and Great Pumpkin on what I like best, but I think Christmas always ekes out. So Christmas is the best. Yeah. Great pumpkins Pumpkin. too. Then there's a big drop off for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving, I watch. I almost hate watch for Peppermint Patty's Bogart. Yeah, yeah. Like the way she just invites herself to Chuck's yeah. house, and then and then and then has the audacity to, to be pissed off that Snoopy made popcorn and toast. Yeah, when you invited yourself and a dog made toast. A like, dog that's made impressive. toast. Yeah. Like we're overlooking Snoopy. Yeah, yeah. And then it's Easter Beagle is. It just yeah, gets worse no, from there. So so I like to think only the first three really exist, and I kind of pretend that the others never happened. But I love It's Great Pumpkin. That's one I always watch. Did you have a ritual as a kid? Like uh, TV 38 here in Boston, which was our, our – um, it was an independent affiliate. Right. They, for years, would do Friday the 13th Marathon always. on yes, Halloween. have to. Movie Loft. I have, I have Friday the 13th uh, on my DVR right now. You're going to watch uh, it on Halloween? 
I'm gonna watch them up until Halloween and on yeah. Halloween. Which is strange because it's it's not very Halloweeny. It's a summer no, horror it's flick. Summer, yeah. it's a horror movie. And I wonder if people around here associate it with Halloween because we had those marathons more than anything else. That's like that was what you watched on Halloween. If you and that might 80s, that might have something to do with why I love it so much yeah. on Halloween, but. I'm a horror movie. I love horror movies in general. Yeah. Halloween. Hall- the original Halloween The original is Halloween fantastic. is my favorite horror movie of all time. It's perfect. And yeah. I love Halloween's three season of The Witch. I We've talked about this. I love it. And it's a much more uh, Halloween-y Halloween movie. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I, I think I watched it last year, and I don't think I hated it as much yeah. as I... I think most of my hate for it stemmed from No Michael Myers. The bait and switch. You were yeah, expecting Yeah, I was like, Michael wait a Myers. minute. Yeah. Where's Michael? And I said this to you before. Every time I go to L.A., we go to the house from Halloween and yeah. Halloween 2, which is on the same street, well, a street away from the Nightmare on Elm Street they, house. They frame Halloween so beautifully. Oh, it's an amazing the, movie. The streets, the the look, yeah. the fall, the, the leaves. The music is great. Yep. Like, everything it's about perfect. it. It's perfect. It's a perfect time. It's amazing. And, and now, 2 gets a lot of, of flack. I think the first 45 minutes of 2 is amazing. Oh, the continuation? Because it just keeps yeah. going. Yeah. And I love Donald Pleasance's uh, yeah. Dr. Loomis. Who gets increasingly more and more oh, insane. Oh, he's hilarious. Yeah. You don't know what death is. Yes. Evil. Uh, but that's when you find out Laurie's his sister and it starts getting a little It gets crazy. a little ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Uh, I love that. Uh, Night of the Demons is a favorite. It takes place on Halloween. If, if you have or haven't seen that one, that's a classic. Okay. Uh, anything else that you like? You absolutely have to watch for Halloween? Or as a kid, was there something that you had to watch aside from Friday the 13th? Um, for me, the movies are great. But I also love sitcoms. Yep. And I judge sitcoms by how they uh, treat... Holidays. Holidays. Mm-hmm. And so, Night Court. Every year. Every year. Roseanne was great. hmm Any holiday... Uh, any Halloween episode of a sitcom, especially the cheesy 80s, 90s sitcoms, I'm on board. Even if yeah. I didn't like the show... Oh, yeah. I'll watch your... Like, I watched Halloween episodes of Reba. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch never those. watch Reba. The George Lopez show. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I never saw the George Lopez Halloween one, yeah. but I'll watch it. Home Improvement's a show that I hate. They did a Halloween episode they every year. Always I did a Halloween episode. Yep. Love them. Step for by it. Step had some Halloween ones. Yep. Uh, they, Family Matters. Family Matters had several. Stevel and Stevel too. Yep. Uh, Although my favorite ones. one is the one with the first one they did when they were in the bank. Yes. And Urkel was Superman. Yes. And, it was a bank uh, robbery. Laura was Tina Turner. Classic was, bank yeah. robbery episode. Yep. Uh, Night Courts, I was always a favorite because Harry was a big Halloween fan. They yep. would always they always do some interesting stuff. Cheers actually had great yeah, Halloween Cheers, episodes. Cheers was good. Uh, the final season, Bar Wars 10, The Final War. When is the one where they thought he died? Yes. They thought, yes. Yeah. And they're just playing a joke. Uh, it's That's fantastic yep. and of course roseanne is is great so uh we're gonna go start this movie and the way we're gonna do it is uh on the commercial breaks we'll check back in with uh with reactions to this movie so 1985 made for tv movie this was a huge deal when this aired it okay. was i was so excited for this they really put a lot of promotion into this movie and it was a big deal this was the starring sit- reading rainbows lavar burton. lavar burton this was pre star trek the next generation but post reading rainbow uh the same year on the one wonderful world of disney they premiered their own made for tv halloween movie but it was only an hour long called mr boogity and people kind of fall into the mr boogity or midnight hour camps and i'm staunchly okay, see, in i've never hour. seen mr boogity yeah now was mr boogity about the boogeyman sort of okay because only reason i say this my seinfeld knowledge just kicked yeah. in and there was an episode where elaine said the Boogity Man? Yeah. And I wonder if that was somehow... From Mr. Boogity? Some... I think it's a regional thing like pop and tonic and soda. All right. <laughs> it's like the Boogie Man. Because in England, they say the Bogey Man. The Bogey Man. Yeah. Uh, but Guy Mr. Boogity is decent. Golf. Exactly. The uh, Bogey Man. The Bogey Man. But it's only an hour. It's an hour-long special. It was on the Sunday Night Wonderful World of Disney. And the following year, they did a sequel called Brad and Boogity. If you watch them back to back, it's kind of like a movie, but Midnight Hour is a true movie. Okay. And it reminds me a lot of The Lady in White, if you've ever seen that, which is fantastic with Lucas Haas. and, uh, and Lucas the, Haas, that's yeah, name. it's a good movie. All right, so we're going to start this. 1985's The Midnight Hour, and we will check back in with our reactions at the first commercial break. Okay, we're back. We watched the first 15 minutes here. Uh, it's a commercial break. Before I say anything, your, your initial reaction. I don't know who came up with this. I mean, 
It doesn't matter who came up with the idea. Yeah, it's a pretty cliche plot, I think. It's just like, let's just do something. Yeah. Uh, the cast is hilarious. Pretty much all-star cast of television. Dick Van Patten as a sadistic dentist. And like actually, the worst dentist, though. Yeah, yeah. He's the, And then the mom pretty much... I mean, the mo- he's the son's asking, like, how do I get a girl? Yeah, I'm a nice guy. And the mom's like, just... Throw him over Basically, your shoulder. like, treat him like she's she ain't shit. Yeah. And then the dad's like, you gotta treat, you gotta go get her. Yeah. Like, whoa. Yeah, like, his dad's yeah. sort of inciting a date rape. Yeah, like, what's happening? So the the film sets up, it's in a, it's in an idyllic New England town that's clearly uh, Southern well, that's California. What they said. It's like, we can't forget about the paper boy. Yeah, so the opening scene I actually think is very effective. It's kind of a cool scene. Uh, it's it's this paper boy who I believe is the same kid who played Badger in Better Off Dead. Oh, And right. he uh, he's putting a, a baseball card in the spokes of his bike. Wait a minute, the me too, my two dollars kid no that's the paper boy badgers the younger brother oh who's always trying to pick up trashy women oh oh well yeah uh that that would have been around the same year this is from 85 and so uh at, at the corner of elm street uh yeah, actually elm and maple elm and maple he's uh putting this baseball card by a player i'd never heard of bob uh, robert something wagner yeah something no, like that's that a, that's an it's actor, not the right? actor I'd, I'd have a rob Wa- and bob he couldn't wagner. be a yeah. good baseball because he's spoken he put him in the spokes but he screws up and his finger he cuts himself on the spokes and like anytime i cut myself the first yeah. thing i do is put a halloween mask on yeah he puts on a don post skull mask from halloween 3 with a with a beanie on top it's fall yeah and then the opening shot and then you get a, a cut in a really quick cut in of the midnight hour with wolfman jack yep. says it who, who has to be involved somehow wolfman jack He's in a ton of Halloween episodes, weirdly. Uh, and is, so, that, is that weird, though? Well, he's not really a wolf man. He's just He's hairy. not a wolf man, but okay, you associate wolf man with Halloween. I guess, And yeah. that voice kind of... Ah, the wolf man! <laughs> yeah. yeah, I suppose. Uh, so he's the he's the, the DJ, and it's his minute an hour, and then the whole opening scene is like a three-minute montage of this kid delivering papers all over the city. Bloody... Just bloody papers. Newspapers. Yeah, including to the police chief. Kurtwood Smith, who yes. is the the dad from that '70s show, and also in RoboCop. RoboCop. Yep. That's where I always love that guy. Yeah, I like to think he's the same guy, but just a couple years in the future. You know what? The characters are pretty much the same. Because when RoboCop takes place in like 1997 or something, does it really? The yeah. future. That's right. The future. So maybe he's just like a maybe he's just like an older version of Red from that '70s show. You think you think Red was became a cop later? Yeah. Or maybe he's, maybe Red's the retired, that guy? Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. There's a timeline someone could put together here. A cop. Yeah, I mean, a he's a cop, gangster. whatever. So then we're introduced to the rest of the, we have our main characters, the nerdy bookish guy. Yep. Uh, we have Cindy Morgan from Caddyshack and from Tron, who's the hot substitute teacher. The hot teacher. We get the two hot girls in class, Sherry Belafonte, Fonte. who, beautiful, and Dee Dee Pfeiffer. Who, I don't, I don't agree when you say she looks like. Cameron Diaz. See, I find a real Cameron Diaz thing I she's got going on. I don't find Cameron Diaz attractive. I think I think Dee Dee Pfeiffer is better looking than Cameron Diaz, okay. but they got a real. Have you ever seen the movie Vamp with Grace Jones? Yes, but a long. Yeah, time Dee Dee Pfeiffer is the main girl in that. She's very Cameron Diaz in that specifically. Right. That's well worth revisiting. That's from 1986, so it's uh, around the same time here. And uh, Cindy Morgan actually weirdly looks quite a lot like Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> this thing so it's a uh, day i think she looked honestly i think she looks better than michelle yeah that's true she's a very very pretty woman still looks great today does a lot of conventions and stuff looks All pretty right. much exactly the same and so there's uh way too old high school kids we got peter deloise uh before 21 jump street we got LeVar Burton. Well into Reading Rainbow. Yeah. Years. Who's like kind of a street tough. He's playing quarters. Well, that's the thing. That's the hilarious thing about it. It was like in the 80s, if you wanted to be a you know down with the system, badass kids in high school, you're playing quarters in the corner. Yeah. And he's like, talking about how he lived in New York. I think they wrote this as like a tough street kid, but then they cast LeVar Burton. <laughs> it's not going to work. I don't, buy, I, don't, I don't buy anybody's toughness who tucks their shirt in. With yeah, your belt. yeah. Like, I don't believe in that. Yeah, that's. I think that's. You're not fair. beating me up. If you have your shirt tucked in, yeah, like as a badass, I'm pretty sure I could beat you up. I think you're probably right. Yeah. And so then the, the nerdy character Phil, whose dad is Dick Van Patten, the sadistic dentist, which I have to mention, there's a scene in the dental office where he's just torturing this woman, and she she's specifically asks him for Novocaine, and then he says no. 
<laughs> he, says, he says no. He says it's overrated. Yeah, yeah. Nova, you don't want that shit. I when I was a kid, my dentist told me Novocaine was for quote fairies, and no. he wouldn't give it to us. So we had we had. You pa- can sue that guy. Well, I think he's dead now. But, but I, uh, you, yeah. Did yeah. you did your parents know he said this? To yeah. You? Oh yeah. And what did th- they were just like just put up with it, and so all the cavities I had filled were There's Novocaine no, uh, free. See if it, that had to be the moment when you said adults are full of shit. Pretty much, I think Never, I probably hit that before. They're that. just human beings who are trying to get by. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they have no idea what they're doing. Have I ever told you the the fluoride incident with this guy? No. So, you know, you'd get a fluoride treatment <laughs> as a kid, and it was, the fluoride was always awful, like it was always tutti fruity or great. It was gross. So I'm maybe 10 or 11 years old, and I, I said, hey, do they have unflavored fluoride? And he makes a huge, he goes, oh, the princess wants unflavored. And he goes, this whole thing, and he goes, you want me to special order you some? And I was like, yeah, that sounds all right. Are you 100% sure this dude was a dentist? I, he, he was in the back of a truck. No, he wasn't an actual dentist. <laughs> I don't, that dude does not sound like a dentist He to me. learned in the Korean War. I think I saw a story about that dude in Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah, you may have. He was Bigfoot. Uh, and so I'm like, great, I'm going to get this unflavored. Six months later, my next checkup, I go in, I walk in, they're like, little Miss Reed's here, we got your special package. And they make what this the big fuck? deal out of it, right? So he puts the fluoride in my mouth and it's really bitter and I start gagging and he goes, now you know why they flavor it. And I'm like, instead of just saying unflavored is really bitter, that's why they flavor it. He special ordered it and waited for six months just to have this payoff. I like it when they gag. Yeah. He was a real awful person. So yeah, sadistic dentist. And then we're set up with the backstory of this movie. So it's in a place called Pitchford Falls. That's supposed to be like a New Englandy town, even though you can see the mountains of California. Well, they definitely set it up. They framed it like, here's a town where nothing bad can happen. Yeah. And when it does happen, you go, nothing. We never thought anything like that right. could happen here. Very small town America, like gremlins kind of opening yep. sort of thing. Except they have a witchcraft museum, which is very strange. And the reason is this, this main character, Phil, does a he's supposed to do a report on uh halloween with local history so we get the whole sam hain spirits of the dead celtic the, the history. legends yeah the legendary demons legendary demons of halloween also the name of my band legendary demons awesome band yep. uh but the local tie is that his great 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 grandfather defeated demons brought to earth on halloween by the great 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 grandmother of Shelley Bella Sherry Belafonte who they feel the need to point out was his slave uh-huh <laughs> um, who was the most powerful witch on earth and uh just introduced demons to the city and Not somehow, so powerful when she could get out of that slave work. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, the most powerful I'm a witch. Shut up, bitch. Just get out there. <laughs> you pick the, clean this now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is a good point. Like yeah. what what kind of witch doesn't go, you know what? And does the bewitch nose twinkle? Yeah. And makes every white person slaves. She just goes, you know, I'll put up with this for a while, but I, I've had enough on Halloween. I'm going to release all the legendary yeah, demons. I'm a fucking witch. Yeah, it'd be funny if there was one final thing that was the, str- like, she was like, this slave thing's okay. And then he's like, hey, make me a cake for my birthday. And she's like, fuck this. That's it. Demons. <laughs> like, that was the final straw. That's how straw. you know being white is the shit because yeah. they had a, a witch. Yeah. Was like, you They're know, I slave. Can't, I can't do anything. Slave witch I gotta do what is they my want to heavy do. metal band. Yeah. Slave witch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, although that sounds like a really, really weird sandwich. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. So that, that part slave doesn't witch, Slave yeah. witch. Can you yeah. put some more pickles on my slave? Yes, uh, I'd like this. I like uh, mustard on my yeah, slave I like this sandwich to work for me. Um, yeah, they, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But the history is this guy's relative and her relative were at odds. Somehow this guy put at the odds. demons back to hell. And we understand now what what has happened in the past. Peter DeLuise is sort of the bully. He's like the football jock. Well, he's bully. got the, the Letterman jacket in yeah. the eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lavar Burton's also a bully, which again I'm somehow. not buying. Yeah, they somehow convinced this kid to go to the witchcraft museum and steal the period costumes off the wax figures to wear at the Halloween party that night. Now, first of all, I'm calling bullshit on not having a costume on Halloween day. Yeah, you you already you, yeah. you wait till Halloween day and you have no costume. Yeah, I don't want to hang with those people. No, they they didn't plan. They're too impulsive. So they steal the costumes and they steal a chest and they almost get caught. So they just run out with it. And at this point, before the commercial break, they decide to go try these clothes on in the cemetery. Well, first off, when they're stealing the chest, they drop it 
They pick it up. Yep. They they're screaming. They don't know what they're gonna do next. Yeah. And then when they get in the car and drive off, LeVar Burton says, clean getaway. Yeah, that is my favorite. And then they crank the Midnight Hour by crank. Wilson Pickett. It, oh, it just happened to be on, by yeah, the way. perfect. Clean Wolfman Jack introduces it. Getaway. Clean getaway. I'd like to think Burton ad-libbed that line uh, <laughs> and was just like, this is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, Let's just, are we done? Yeah. Can I just have my paycheck? And I love for- Halloween, but I'm not hanging out in the goddamn cemetery. No, I wouldn't hang out in a cemetery it's in Halloween either. No, and it's not that I'm creeped up. Like, do you do you believe in that kind of stuff or like supernatural things? That creep oh, you up? sure. I've seen oh, okay. ghosts. Okay. All right. Where have you seen ghosts? Should I say that? Yeah, you can say it. Uh, You're not the first on the show to admit they've seen ghosts. I saw my grandmother when I was a kid. Really? Yeah, after she passed. Right after? Like immediately after? Probably within a year. Because I've had people say that, like they're in bed and like their, you know, recently passed relative has like come to visit them and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a guy who believes that there's more out there than okay. what we can explain. Sure. So so cemetery stuff would creep you out, not just like it seems like. I mean, I don't know if it even would even creep me out because I know that there's more out there. Right. I'm just, I'm not, I don't want to hang out. Halloween's usually kind of cold. Yeah. I don't want to go hang out in a cemetery. I'm hanging out in yeah. a cemetery. Fair enough. All right, well, let's get back to the movie. We'll see what unfolds. What could possibly happen? They've stolen witches' ancient artifacts, and they're just trying to run the cemetery. In the cemetery. Nothing's what gonna could happen. possibly go wrong? Nothing, nothing. Clean getaway. Clean getaway. Wow. So a, lo- a lot happened in this in this segment between commercials. Oh, so. uh, yeah. Yeah. A whole lot of uh, insanity ensued. Yeah, so they really upped the ante. So they're in the graveyard, as we left them before, and we get a real Evil Dead thing going on. They open this chest that they stole, and and the curse just happens to be in there in a scroll. Of course. Because if you're you're a witch hunter, and you, you you stop an invasion of all the legendary demons in death. All of them. All of them. And... You have a witch, and she used a certain curse to do this. You would want to hang on to that. Yeah, you want to keep it around, and because you never know, this is a, you have a vendetta against the town. And yeah, you figure one day so somebody she, will reopen. It. You'll need it. So this is three hundred years to the day on Halloween night. So that means in sixteen eighty five, if yeah. my math is correct, is when this happened the first time. Sherry Belafonte, as a joke, uh, reads the curse and and actually invokes the curse. Well, she is her great 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 grandmother's child. That's true. And now we're regaled with the scene of uh, the kids leave before this happens so yeah, they don't know they what take happens off. they have no idea uh first of all her great 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 grandmother the witch the slave witch yes they- uh who was buried in the cemetery which i don't know a ton about history but i don't think they buried hanged witches in cemeteries with everybody else they couldn't figure that out in the script well also her gravestone had a pentagram on it which pretty much indicated like hey she probably well, like we're respectful of her Wiccan faith, <laughs> or maybe when maybe they felt bad because she was a slave, they were like, "Look, we gotta try to make this right." Right. We hanged her. She's a witch, so she comes back to life, looking great, amazing. By the yeah. way, yeah, ton of zombies who are terrifying. A lot of them. Uh, the zombies are terrifying, but most of them are very well preserved, and yeah. they take great they 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 go through great pains to make sure you know. Which ones are creepy yep. and which ones are to be romanticized? Right. Because it seems they buried nobody in suits. Right. Except, for, was, except for the dwarf. Okay, the dwarf, he was impeccably dressed. Yes. Everybody else was dre- like the cheerleader. Yep. Was yep. In, so she clearly died on duty. Full on cheerleader comes out and she we don't see her come out of the grave. She just shows up. She just pops out. Right. Stunning. Beautiful. Amazing. Doesn't look dead. 50s cheerleader outfit. She can go to high school tomorrow. And nobody yeah. would bat an eye. And I should mention a lot of them don't crawl out of their graves. They explode. Literally explode out of the uh, graves. The, the, my favorite is the werewolf. Yeah. There's a werewolf. They I don't buried know. Buried yeah. a werewolf. I'm like, all right, we get zombies. I get that. Now we get a werewolf, a cheerleader, a dwarf. A guy in a straight jacket and uh, a murderer. And a cop. And a cop, yeah. YMCA yeah, it's a whole, is we get, stay the, the, we get the village people as zombies, just like neon people. maniacs. I just like that they buried a werewolf. Like I don't know werewolf. if they knew he was a werewolf. Oh, right. He might have been, yeah. you know, Jack something. Yeah, because he might have been dead as a guy. Right. But he looks. But you can't kill a werewolf unless you shoot him with a silver bullet. But that would kill a regular person, too. Unless... 
Okay, he turns back into yeah. But okay, so when he comes back, well, wouldn't it be funny if there was a person who thought people couldn't die from silver bullets and only werewolves could? <laughs> it's like I shot him with silver bullets. What's the big deal? Only werewolves would die. I just like to think that the werewolf died of natural causes. Yeah, he led a long and yeah. fruitful life, and it's an interesting werewolf costume because it's exactly like uh, Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz <laughs> album cover uh, werewolf that he has. It's uh, very weird. But the, it's good makeup. Like, they spared no expense on the makeup for no, these monsters. Well, you've made the point. The music and the makeup is where the money went. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. it didn't go into the script. No. And this was 85, so so Thriller was huge. And this graveyard scene is clearly very influenced by Thriller. Yeah. And, yeah, the the music, to Lon's point, they license every huge song. Uh, there, The conceit is that Wolfman Jack's playing Halloween songs on the radio that night, but you're hearing um, There's a Bad Moon on the Right, uh, you're hearing He the Little Red Riding Hood, and all like every Halloween song you can think of, Oldies, The Midnight Hour, like big money songs. They're going to play that again when the Wolfman pops up. I think so. I think so. I'm surprised I haven't played Monster Mash yet. Well, it might come in. We still yeah. got half, we're about halfway through. The other thing is we're introduced to Peter DeLuise, the bully's character's dad, who's the town judge, and he's played by the world's greatest cinematic actor asshole kevin mccarthy well he's a you can see why peter deloise's character is a bully yeah because his dad's a piece of shit he's drunk and he's a drunk and i love how they emphasize the, this joke this, this movie is very like we're going to do it do the work for you yeah he's a drunk how do you know show don't Not tell. just because he's crazy and yeah. he's you know basically they don't show him doing it but you know when the, those doors are closed He's smacking that family around. Well, he basically smacks Peter DeLorezo. He throws him into the corner. and he's, yeah. yeah. But he's holding... Scotch. Scotch. Yeah. That's the sign yeah. of a drunk. In his robe. Yes. That's the thing, too. In a robe and underwear. And the mom is... She's sewing. Just quietly. ignoring it all. Just nothing's wrong. Because he recognizes the witch finder's outfit. Because who wouldn't? Right. And he knows that Peter DeLorezo stole it from the museum, which Peter DeLorezo admits... But then he lets him go out anyway. Yeah, well, what's he? He's got a drink. Yeah, it's true. He's not going to chase Peter Dillon. He's got drinking to do. His booze is in the house. Exactly. So this sets up, they're all going to this Halloween party at the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. Uh, Peter DeLuise is off. He goes to pick up LeVar Burton. Who's dressed? He's dressed, I think, as a mummy. But he looks a little bit like the the main character in They Call Me Bruce. <laughs> he just looks like he's been in an accident. He does, he does look like he's been in a bad accident. Yeah, yeah. And he puts ketchup uh, for fake blood and egg yolk that's where it gets a little weird i and mean the, some chocolate yeah the ketchup's kind of strange but could be blood i don't know what egg yolk could possibly be and then he comes outside and there are kids that are toilet paper they the, trees, the whole house yeah and the man who put on egg yolk ketchup and chocolate on his mummy costume said well, they really get into Halloween around here, don't they? Like, yeah, here in New England, because I'm from New York City, where they don't even have Halloween. It's right. not like they have a big Halloween parade every year. It's down not there. like I'm ready or anything. <laughs> yeah. So they're going out, and then, uh, maybe my favorite part in the movie thus far, our hero, Phil, yep. comes oh. downstairs in, I don't even know how to explain this costume, from the neck down, Dracula. Right. From the neck up, Kiss... Sort of kiss makeup, but Star Child, not not Demon. Is there something that happened in the eighties that we should know about? I don't know who's. The... I I get the idea that it's like we can't use any makeup that's remotely close to anything copywritten. Oh right, so those it's monsters are owned. Yeah, it's like. Well, how can they use the werewolf then? That's true, but it doesn't look like the Universal werewolf. Okay. So his makeup is like silver pancake makeup with like sort of shiny blue sort of owl thing going on and he's got like a like a, a tina wig. turner like a, glitter yes, wig that's exactly yeah. where i was going with that tina turner wig it's a bizarre costume and he goes out in his 50s car because he likes old things yep. and picks up pretty much picks up this dead cheerleader not knowing that she's not dead knowing she's dead has a weird fantasy sequence where he fills her up at a traffic light that's okay yeah which is perfectly Those things fine happen. Those totally things happens fine. and then Remember, his dad told him to go for it. Dad, dad said, go for it. If you find an undead cheerleader and you're at a red light, feel her up. But oh, that's well, just a fantasy sequence. Let's not overlook the trick or treat who was dressed up as a... Uh, Oliver uh, Hardick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, in 85. Yeah. Yeah. Kid didn't give a fuck about... But that was the go-to fat kid costume. 
they were like, you have to be all, in it, Yeah, well, who else in 85 would you dress a fat kid up as? Oh, my God. Uh, I State guess, Puff? Nah, that was too early. Nah, no, that was around the time. But that would have been too contemporary. Yeah. That's like the go-to. Well, Tom think about Louise. Well, Peter DeLuise is Peter his DeLuise son. He's in the, in movie. the movie. Uh, yeah, I guess if you're like an 80 year old t- TV movie producer, you're like fat kid Oliver Hardy. Yeah, <laughs> I knew him well. <laughs> but they show trick or treating at the dentist's house, and he's giving out extra candy because he wants kids to have to he come back with cavities later, back. which is pretty bad. Yeah. So right before well, that, he's the same guy who said Novocaine is for pussies. That's true. That's true. And he, he's giving them uh, fluoride. So right before the commercial break, we get our first murder of yep. the movie. And Kevin McCarthy smashes his own radio because he doesn't like Wolfman Jack, goes out to take the garbage out drunk, and it's the longest walk to the garbage I've ever seen in my life. I honestly think he was too drunk to realize that he had his own garbage cans. Yeah. And he figured, oh, they're over here in the neighbor's yard. I'm just going to put it here. Or maybe he's trying to hide stuff in their garbage. Got stuff in their garbage. Yeah. Oh, here's a, here's a funny side story. My uncle... Uh, in the 90s bought this house in Lynn and he was refurbishing it himself and actually there were ghosts in the house which is a different thing nice. but uh, he had all these these asbestos tiles and in Lynn you could only throw away one garbage bag worth of whatever a week so he had like 40 bags so he asked everyone he knew if he could just you know throw two bags in their house two bags in their house two bags in their house so he does that at our house and my dad doesn't know this and my dad comes home early from work for some reason looks in, at these garbage and he's like why is there extra garbage in here and it's all these tiles and earlier that week the neighbors had had their roof done over right. so he goes they must have thrown these away in my garbage and he goes and throws them all over the neighbor's lawn but they weren't their tiles and uh <laughs> yeah yeah um, he was wrong it was wrong of him to do that so kevin mccarthy goes out throws the trash away and a zombie explodes out of the trash. Explodes. Explodes. And it's the reanimated corpse of a murderer he had sentenced to death. I think we mentioned he's a judge. Zombies do big things. Yeah. They don't just show up like, hey, what's no. up? They bust. In this movie, zombies do big things. They explode out of things. Yeah. And he strangles Kevin McCarthy to death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we're cliffhanger. Presumably the party's happening. Probably the first zombie I've ever seen that doesn't eat people. Just strangles them. Just strangles them. Well, that's what uh, John Landis has a great observation about the Wolfman and all the old movies. He strangles people. (laughs) He's the Wolfman. Why is he strangling people? Work work smarter, right? Yeah, anyone could do that. All right, so we're back to... I assume we're going to have the big party now. It's got to be. It's party time. It's party time. All right. The cheerleaders. She's got to show up, right? The cheerleader? At the party? I assume so. Yeah. Stunning. Stunning girl. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to the party. Wow. Look, wow. We've gotten to the point in this movie where it's clear they have zero point. Yeah. There's or they no just point. don't care. They, yeah. They're just like, we need, yeah. we have two months to get this out. Yeah. we get. We, it's got to be on by Halloween. You got to have this in tomorrow. Yeah. We get you the cast. We get you the budget for the music and special effects. We need a script. Who else cares what happens after that? I can't imagine that this was somebody's dream project. No, this is not a passion project. Yeah. And... Oh, we got to do this. Yeah. Yeah. This. So we, we make it to the party. Right. Now, Finally. We're, we're, first of all, we're introduced to the comic relief, which are two zombies. Yep. One played by Mark Blankenship from Fridays. Okay. And uh, the movie uh, Jekyll and Hyde Together Again, which was a cocaine fueled disco version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You gotta see he that. also stars in the Steve Martin role in the made for TV sequel to The Jerk. Uh-huh. The Jerk 2, T-O-O, Teen Wolf style. He actually is pretty effective as this sort of ridiculous zombie, uh, not speaking character. And there's... Loves popcorn. Loves popcorn. That they uh, put in a coffin. In a which coffin. Which is actually pretty cool. This party actually seems pretty cool. For I would go to party. this party. Yeah. Good costumes. We got a, someone dressed as a mummy with a baby. So they're a mummy mummy. I like the mummy costume. I also like the fact that the mask... That they wore was very Jason Voorhees in yeah. Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. Yep, kind of potato sacky. Yep, which made it creepy. Yeah, holding the baby, extra creepy. I thought it was a creepy costume. Someone dressed as a box of soap. Yep. A lot of punk rocker costumes. Uh, the Cindy Morgan, the substitute teacher, is at the party. At the party, weird. For Not weird. just at the party though. She's in costume. She's in costume, and she's getting. Hammered. hammered she's first of all she's dressed as david bowie in uh like the blue jean uh fashion era david bowie and looks hot to the point where it makes me question some of my sexuality 
dressed as a man like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe not that far, but she, she really, well, uh, her as it is. that's what I'm saying. She, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she looks very good. First thing she asks is for wine and then gets hammered. Hammered. Yeah. And then says, we're out of wine. I need to get drunker. Yeah. And at a this high of, school party. At, at this high school party full of boys who, when I went to school to work, yeah. were drooling over me. Yep. Nothing, nothing can go wrong. No. Nothing bad will happen. Now, meanwhile, LeVar Burton is super horny. Yep. He keeps trying to do it with Sherry Belafonte. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get pretty frank with the sex talk for a made-for-TV movie where Shara Belafonte and Dee Dee Pfeiffer, they're like, you guys do everything. She goes, not everything. She's like, practically everything. And we both agree that everything LeVar Burton says is in the same cadence as everything he says on Reading, Reading Rainbow. Rainbow. So you just expect to hear, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. I love Halloween and zombies. Yeah. But you don't have to take my word for it. Bam, bam, bam. By the way, side note, when I was in school, when I was a kid... That was our favorite thing to diss somebody with. Yeah. If they were telling a story that nobody cared about, one of us would just go, ba-dum-bum, and that meant move on to the next story. You don't have to take my word for Come on, Sherry Belafonte. I'd really like to have sex with you, but you don't have to take, take my, my word, word for, for it. it. Ba-dum-bum. I have a book called Tight Times. <laughs> Tight Times. Whoa, appropriate. Yeah. Um. So, Sherry Belafonte's great, 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 uh, a grandmother shows up from back from the grave. Yep. The witch, who they've told us is a witch, yep, they, ten to twelve times. They, they went through great length, yeah, to tell us that she's a witch. In fact, the most powerful witch on earth. Yeah, she is definitely a witch. Except now, she's some reason a vampire. Well, she's clearly a witch so powerful she could that she could be become a vampire. a vampire. Yep, which adds more to the story of how did this vampire witch woman? Yeah. Become a slave. Enslaved. Yeah. Because you've enslaved not only the world's most powerful witch, but a vampire but witch. But one who can become a vampire. Yeah. Now Get out there in that field. Right. Don't you know I am a vampire, motherfucker? Right. And also, this also means she could probably only do work at night. And what kind of slave is that? What kind of slave is that? <laughs> That's not going to do much that you're going to want to see. Yeah. So she ends up... So Sherry Belafonte has to go to the basement to the wine cellar that we all have to get more wine for this drunken, trashy substitute teacher who demands it her grandmother comes down and proceeds to bite her on the neck as witches do yeah to the in slow motion while being uh i guess choreographed to the smiths how soon is now which was a contemporary song and a pretty obscure hip song for a made for tv movie at the time but they get around some of the standards and practices by having all of the red wine bottles exploding. It's not blood. No. It's red wine, and it's just everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. So then we fade to black commercial. What's going to happen next? She a vampire witch? What Do you have predictions? I, I think... All right. Here's what I think. I think she's going to become a vampire witch. Okay. I also think that the, the way they're going to get LeVar Burton yep. is they're both going to present themselves to him and he's going to think threesome. Oh. And he's going to try to make it happen. It's clear yeah. they've already established this dude's horny. Yeah. yeah. All right. And he's trying to get, but another one who and, looks very much like her. Yeah. They're related. And it's just as hot. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to yeah. make, he's going to try to make it happen. So she'd be like a girl. Elf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're also forgetting about the werewolf oh yeah so the werewolf finally came back and killed this guy who was a security guard not a good one no at the wax museum and had these two killer dogs he basically tickled them to death and then the guy came back as a werewolf it, it looked like he was dry humping him to death it yeah. looked like you know yeah. i'm gonna fuck you through your pants yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna give you such a rash that you're gonna die, you're gonna die. yeah so now we have two werewolves on our hands at least one vampire witch Possibly Maybe two. two. Uh, we have a, a popcorn loving zombie and a sunglasses wearing dwarf zombie who sympathizes with a guy who gets rejected by women. Yeah, we should mention that Dee Dee Pfeiffer showed up, who our hero has a has a crush on. She dressed. She came as a punk rock uh, bride of Frankenstein, looking hot, mm-hmm. like someone else, and uh, the kid's crushed. And the the dwarf zombie, he's like, "Hey, man, I'm I'm with you. I've been there, man. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah." So I, hammered together. I mean, I know what happens next, and I don't even know what's going to happen. I next. also feel like, maybe going even further toward the end there, I feel like that when everything is sort of set back to normal, yeah, I think that the wharf zombie is still going to be, like, chilling. Just like the around? end of Con Air when 
somehow Steve Buscemi got away. Yeah. And everybody cheered, even though we forget the fact that the reason why he was in prison right. is because he was a child molester, kidnapper, yeah. Or yeah. murderer, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think this dwarf zombie at the end of this movie is going to be the one zombie who sticks around and is just the cool, drunk, yeah. Dwarf zombie. He's like the Spuds McKenzie of dwarf zombies. Yeah. yeah. He's going to be like, oh, that's that's uh, Steve. It'd be funny if this was all a setup to have a TV series like ALF about this dwarf zombie <laughs> who lives with this dentist and their crazy family. And they're ah. always going to feed him people's brains. All right. We'll see what happens with dwarf zombie. We're going back to the movie. It's midnight hour. All right. We're down to the last 30 minutes here of this movie. And it was getting hot. Yeah. Uh cheerleader came back yeah and she's all about she's super horny she's yeah yeah she gets him to go to make out point with her but before that she tries to get him in a drag race she does get him in a drag race i mean she does get him in a drag race yeah yeah and now we know why she's dead yeah first of all she just gets in this car with this dude he doesn't know after they have a conversation about suicide which is the first thing you say to pick up a girl i mean that's a classic pickup line that's how i get them they want to go to the malt shop which doesn't exist anymore it's a multiplex so then she gets him in a drag race with some grease balls. Cigarettes. That's They're what smoking. turned around. Yeah, she gives them the look. Cigarettes and leather jackets is how he got laid in the 50s. He blows them out of the way with his old car. The guy doesn't even start no. his car. He doesn't no. even know what hit him. He, do- he doesn't even know what a drag race is. No. In fact, I don't even know that they knew they were drag racing. <laughs> He was just like, I'll do anything for you, toots. Yeah, and she's like, get the top down. And she's hanging out of the top of this car, just like wooing and screaming like a maniac. She's standing up in the car, and she's like, oh, my God. Like, she's clearly a lunatic. I'm like, wow, this chick. Yeah, now I get it. Yeah, now we know why she died. Now we know why she died. So then they have a slow dance in the middle of the street to some song. And she asked me to go to make out point with her. And puts on lipstick. Lipstick. Bottom lip. Just bottom lip. And she looks at him with, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's very erotic. Yeah. They get to make out point. The only one's there. They start making out. She's all, let's get in the back seat. I've never made out in a car. I don't know if I'd be into that. Um, I, You know, I've done some car stuff. Done car stuff? It seems, un- car it seems stuff. uncomfortable. It's, but you're not thinking, like, that's not what's on your mind. It's like, I don't well, know. Like I'm, as a dude, especially... At an age when you do car stuff. Yeah, because you can't do like, You have no other place to go. Where are we going to... Yeah. I'm not even going to question I guess, the location yeah. right now. I guess that's true. I really want this car stuff. Yeah, I guess we're we're making fun of this kid for, for not picking up on the signs here. But if you're like 17, yeah, some hot girl in a cheerleader outfit right. is all coming on to you, you kind of overlook the craziness and in the car stuff. Especially when she dabs on that lipstick. Lower lip. Bottom lip lipstick. Let's get in the back seat. Yep. And she says, let's get in the back seat. Oh, yeah. She's well, all about it. I'm sorry. I missed a major thing here. She says, I'm cold. Put the top up. Yep. And we are <laughs> we are shown a crane shot of the top going up in the most blunt Freudian erection uh, metaphor maybe I've ever seen on film. Everybody gets big, flat erections. Yep. Painfully slow, too, because it's yep. like a real-time how long a 1957 Cadillac top would take to go off. So it's about and it 15 made this minutes. noise. It was like... Uh... Every dick in America sounds like that. Yeah, exactly. They're getting at it hot and heavy. And you're like, it's going to happen. Yep. Then, of course, what happens? A werewolf. A werewolf comes A werewolf in. shows up. Yeah. What's the name of this movie in Europe? Werewolf Cockblock. Werewolf Cockblock. Yeah, that's what it was called for European markets when it played <laughs> those shows. Sold out everything. Oh, huge movie. It's the werewolf biggest movie in Japan. Block. He rips through the top. They hit him with the car. He falls into the water. And then right before commercial, we get a slow-mo just the guy the werewolf freaking out thrashing just losing his mind when really he shouldn't be the one who's mad but he seems like he had enough sort of wits about him to stage his elaborate cock block like i'm gonna be on the roof oh yeah but then when he gets the you know the water situation he doesn't know what to he do he doesn't know what to do he's like just i didn't plan swinging. this part. yeah i didn't it's... plan for this this is not how i thought this would I go i didn't know this was gonna happen and they I speed thought i was off. gonna cock block yeah I don't know, bite somebody, maybe? Yeah, that's, that was all I do. And these motherfuckers had the nerve to toss me in the water? It'd be funny if the original werewolf myth was that they just cock-blocked. That's all they did <laughs> was cock They go from house to house and keep everyone doing it once a month, and then that's it. They don't kill anyone. They're just like, ah, and like you ruined it. 
what's wrong? I don't know. Yeah. Once a month, I when the moon is full, I just don't want you to get laid. <laughs> I want to ruin people's. I want to ruin people's blowjobs. I think we just wrote a movie. Yeah. I think we got a we we got a great wolf cock movie. block. Yep. So let's get back to the movie. We'll see if there's more werewolves, more cock blocking. Oh. LeVar Burton got bit. He got bit by the vampire witch. Yes. So we did confirm she's now, I guess, a vampire, vampire witch, witch. Who's also possessed by her great, 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 great grandmother. That, she said that I'm not the only one because now the woman's inside of her. Yeah, there's two people inside of her, but the other woman's still wandering around. It's very complicated. So LeVar Burton oh, was essentially having a threesome. It's a threesome with one person. Right. And uh, uh, Cindy Morgan, the teacher. Oh, is my God. Super hammered. Yo. She starts coming on to Peter DeLuise. So I asked you, I said, who's she dancing with? And you yeah. were like, okay, that's the guy she came with. I think she brought that guy to the party. Enough. Yeah. But Peter DeLuise comes over, high school student, yeah. and taps the guy in the shoulder and gives him the, I'm cutting in. Yeah. Have you ever and cut in? I've never seen I've anyone never cut, cut in. in. Yeah. And the guy who came, yep. and if he came with this teacher, yep. I would imagine he's an adult. Yeah, he should be. He just went... All right, cool. Uh, them's the rules. Them's the rules. <laughs> yeah. You know, yep. and then the teacher's like, yeah, I'll dance with you. Yeah, and she's like falling over. And, and you know, in Peter DeLuise's defense, he might be an undercover narc who's Very actually true. in his mid-20s. I also, I, 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 uh, I'll raise you that he doesn't need a defense. Yeah. He's doing what we all wish we had the balls That's to true. do. If, if We've a, all had a hot teacher. Yeah. I had a hot teacher when yeah. I was in high school. Everybody who did. was amazing. Yeah, and I remember there was one kid in class who had the the first week of school or the first day of school. She was my creative reading, uh, writing teacher, and yeah. later my drama teacher. Creative reading would be a great yeah, creative class. reading was another <laughs> class, and uh, we thought she was a student. Yeah, I think she was like twenty three or twenty four years old. We were like fifteen, and one of my friends was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna try this," and then he walked up. And she basically told him the truth. Yeah. And then he kind of came back with his tail between his legs, which we called getting sent home back in those days. Did you go, bum bum uh, right, <laughs> Did she right. just say that yeah. to him? He was like, ba-dum, hey, maybe you, bum 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 Well, if she showed up drunk at a party dressed as David Bowie, he might have had a shot. He's, Peter DeLuise has a shot. I think he's in with a shot. I don't know shot. how it was going to turn out, well, but he's werewolf, definitely got a shot. A werewolf might cock block him. A yeah, werewolf was going to show up. You might get that silver bullet cock block. So let's see. We have uh, one more commercial break and then the conclusion of the Midnight Hour. Midnight Hour. Wow. <laughs> that, I I think this was the best segment of the movie. This The this party just party. kicked up. The yeah. party just picked up. Business just picked up. We, I mean, we'll, we'll go to what happened at the beginning of the segment, but it just ended with, no lie, a full on music video. Music video choreographed called a song called I'm dead. You're dying sung by Sherry Belafonte. This is because of the video. This movie now goes into that category where I like to say, I would like to be in that movie, yeah. not be in that movie. I want to be in that world yeah. where that movie is happening because I want to go to that party. That's now the best party that's ever I want to go to that party. Yeah. There's a full on like thriller style choreographed dance. I'm dead. You're, You're dying. dying. Everybody come on and try it. Get dead. What did you say? Get dead. I think it's get dead. Yeah. And Which, the, the full pa- the entire party's dancing. Yeah. In units like. Oh, it's chore- it's it was choreographed. It's choreographed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, you add another hyphen to that vampire witch. Yep, vampire witch choreographer. And you Paula dubbed Abgul. her. Paula Abghul. Paula Abghul. That's Brum. right. Ghouls just want to have fun. Ghouls just want to have fun. Yeah, it's, and it's not just like miming a song. Like, this is a full-on look at the camera and sing yep. three and a half minute video in the middle of this movie for yeah, no it had reason. had to happen. Yeah, it's outstanding sherry belafonte pitched that guaranteed oh yeah guaranteed she thought it that was wasn't a big, in the script yeah it had to be a big hit single they were like i bet we could just look videos are huge we could probably just cut this segment out and make it there's the video done it'd be funny if this was an elaborate ruse to make a music video for her on a tv, <laughs> a TV movie, movie budget built around <laughs> it because it you know it's not actually that bad of a song it sounds like vanity it's catchy yeah i'd listen to I'm it i'm gonna hear it again yeah i'm gonna try to make a rip of it if i can find uh an mp3 of sherry belafonte's i'm dead you're dying somewhere 
if someone knows and can send one to me and I can find it, please do because I'd like that I'd like to put this on my heard. iPod. That's a Halloween yeah. song. That is one absolutely. That is we do not have enough Halloween songs. Yeah, yeah. And that needs to be that should go into the rotation. Yes, it was like a monster mash for the eighties. It was even the dwarf was dancing. The dwarf at the end, big dance freeze. Yep, yep. Yo, yo, two camera dance freeze. And I, I do want to mention one thing we neglected in the last segment was real zombies make out making at this out. party. It's a make out party, and there's people with no lips making out. I've never seen that before. But they did. That was a good uh, catch by you. They did do that move where they made out, and then they both went. I don't. Yeah, there's no lips. They don't have any lips. Yeah, but they didn't stop them. No, they kept going. But they kept hooking up. Everybody's horny in this movie. The zombies are getting more action than me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they didn't. No werewolf showed up to cockblock those zombies. No, no. They have a they have a pact. The <coughs> werewolves and the zombies. We I'll leave you guys be. Eli, You've had it hard thing, enough. You guys. So back to the plot. The plot as it as it exists. There's a okay. I was gonna. The werewolf attack them, as we remember. Yes. So what do you do when a werewolf attacks? You go to the police. You go, of course. Kirkwood Smith, not having it. Not having it. Not having it. There's reports of, of zombies all night. A guy turned into a bat. Werewolves, he's like, very funny. Very funny. Pranks. This is the same thing that happened last year when it yeah. didn't happen at all last yeah, year. Yeah, that did not happen. But this sounds like last year. Yeah. It's Halloween. He goes, tells him to pound sand. They go outside, and at this point, cheerleader, Sandy... Figures out what's going on. Well, she didn't figure out what's going on. She seemed to know exactly what was going on. Yeah, she goes, what did you do in the cemetery? And maybe my favorite line in the movie was, oh, we did a ritual that unleashed all the demons in hell and stuff, but nothing happened. Nothing happened. He was just attacked by a werewolf. <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> but nothing happened. We didn't do it. It wasn't us. So now she goes, oh, I know exactly what you need to do. This is the same girl who, by the way, thought she was still in 1955. That's right. Looking for her house. That's and now right. all of a sudden she realizes, I got to let him know that I'm dead. Yeah. And he but goes. She doesn't even know. No, but she's kind of figured out all of a sudden. She goes, some people are out to kill you, these dead people. But some of them are just back to do things they never got to do in life. And he's like, like what? She Blow goes, you in the back of a car. Yeah. Fall in love. So then she somehow knows how to undo all this. Yep. She goes, you need to get that parchment, which, in the movie's defense, I apologize. I now understand why he kept the curse, because mm. in order to reverse the curse, uh, so the Red Sox can win, yeah, dude, you need to take thing. that parchment. The same and, thing I was <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Reverse the reverse curse. the curse. And in 29, 29 years. 29 years. You need to get the ring, the sigil ring that Peter DeLuise is wearing of this kid's great, 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 great grandfather. And seal that curse with wax, not just any wax, yeah. wax made from the bones yes. of this witch hunter. That's how you make wax. Do you make wax from bones? You make I don't wax think you do. Bones. Make gelatin. Yeah. You could make human gelatin. That was my funk fan in college. <laughs> and, uh, human, gelatin. <laughs> human gelatin. So Get now dead. I'm, I'm dying. dying. Everybody come on and try it. Get dead. dead. So that's, we get that revelation. Here's how we undo it. Oh, and the reason you have to undo it is if they don't by midnight. Yeah, it gotta be. They, and, they're here forever. Yeah. Anyone who died is gonna be alive forever and anyone touched by evil will remain forever. So why would you want to reverse this? Because that means, oh, so we're gonna, all right. Yeah, so we're you gonna see what's that, gonna happen. We're gonna yeah. get that scene where it's, she's going away. Yep. But she was also was coming of age. Yeah. So possibly now he can now he can hook up with Cameron Diaz. Who here's the funny thing about Dee Dee Pfeiffer, I think she's the only one at this party who hasn't been turned into a vampire witch. Probably it's just normal, but it's just kind of into it. Is everybody been bitten? Is that is, are we? I'm not exactly because sure. Because Lavar Burton was asleep for a long time, yeah, and then all of a sudden popped his head up. Like, well, the music was pretty jumping. Yeah, he popped his head up. He was bitten. Yep, smiled with fangs. Smiled and just breaks right into a dance. Yeah, he really got down. I'm dead. You're, You're dying. dying. Yeah. I, Sherry Belafonte, you said your mother told you you had a crush on her. Apparently. And I can see why. Yeah. It makes sense. She was attractive. Yeah. You might have uh, you might have heard that song. That We need to single-handedly, the two of us are going to bring that song back. It's going to be hot. It's going to be the Monster Mash yeah. for the for the 21st century. It's going to be the Monster Mash for the 90s. Yes. Mo it's a Monster <laughs> Mash for my generation. <laughs> So here we are at the climax of the movie. This is the final 20 minutes. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I ha I also still think that even when they reverse the curse, the little guy, the little guy, somehow there's going right. to be a, a, like a the credits roll, and then he's somewhere getting drunk. Yeah, he's popping out with a big beer. Chicks. Yeah, yeah. I think you might be right. I, I think, think that's right. what might happen. 
All right, so we'll see if you're right. We're going to go watch the conclusion of the Midnight Hour. Midnight Hour. It's all over. It's You seem relieved and disappointed. Uh, the ending... All right, so only one of my predictions happened, which was the girl yeah. going back to the dead and having that heartfelt, I love, I love you. you, Yeah. even though I've known you for 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I, so, you know, he has to go get the parchment. Yep. But they do this drive through town, and it's 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 hell on earth, I guess. Essentially, everybody's dead. Yep, everybody's, everybody's dead. a zombie. The yep. whole town is dead, except yep. for him. Yep, his date's even dead. The date's dead. The yeah. date's been dead. We should mention Peter DeLuise, uh, the his dad, yep. the drunk judge. The drunk judge yep. comes driving. Kevin McCarthy up. comes drunk driving up, and he goes, "Ah, he's probably drunk." And then his own dad strangles him to death. Which again is probably something he's used to yeah yeah and they need to get the ring off of peter deloise so they go back to the party after driving through the hell on earth now just to describe the hell on earth i think you summed it up very well in that it's a suburban idea of right of chaos you, you had uh the milkman was yep. dead and his contribution to the mayhem <laughs> yep was pouring milk out yep perfectly good milk perfectly good milk yep on top of his truck yep this is me being, I'm going to, you know. Fuck this. Fuck everything. Yeah. A mailman burning, burning mail. Burning mail. The police chief, we didn't believe them earlier. Might have been some bills in there. It could have been bills. Maybe even a check. Maybe. Social security checks for old people. And uh, Kurtwood Smith's hands on fire. On fire. And yep. he turns around to show you. Yep. I don't know what that symbolized. But. Werewolf rips a fire, uh, fire, <laughs> fire hydrant, hydrant out, out of the ground. Oh. Yeah. So they somehow get, oh, and... I'm all over the place here. He makes silver bullets, our hero here, Phil. Yes. Which is actually kind of a clever part of the movie because at this point, they used to make fillings out of silver back in the 80s still. Uh, I had some had to be replaced from my evil dentist with because uh, they were cracking. But so he makes silver-tipped bullets using his dad's dental equipment. Mm-hmm. But his dad shows up as a crazy-looking zombie. His dad's a zombie with the dental equipment. Yep. As though he's ready to take it out on his son. Yeah. Foaming at the mouth. By the way, the dad died and then put on his scrubs. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be doing work tonight. Well, everybody in the movie was wearing their work clothes. Everybody as died a at dead work. Person. Yeah. Everybody died at work in this town. Yeah. And everybody's back from the dead. There's Civil War soldiers. Yep. At this point, they have established that it is supposed to be in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you and I live here. It's pretty accurate. It was a guy playing exactly. the flute. Yep. The guy with the drum. Yep. And we so had. It was the exact crew. Yeah. Because we had, what, maybe 40, 50 Civil War battles up here in Massachusetts. Yep, all of them. <laughs> Historically all accurate. Up here, Most of it happened up Ground here. Ground zero. So they go, they get, you know, they, they fix the thing. Uh, the teacher, you think she's okay? She's in the backseat. She's actually some kind of like oh, sleeper right. she's, agent. She's alive. Yeah. Uh, and they, they get rid of everyone. They, they, she says she loves them. They put the, the seal on the parchment. Everybody disappears. Disappears. I should say Peter DeLuise, I think, gets the MVP award for once he's undead. He really goes for it. He goes crazy. He goes nuts. He's his dad's son. Yeah. She goes crazy. I mean, she disappears. He finds her grave. She died in 1959. Yep. Before she died, she wrote their initials with a heart on the grave in lipstick. In lipstick. He turns the radio on. She was busy in these, like, she, millisecond those, before she died. She had a lot of work to do. Yeah. And she, she dedicated a song to him on the Wolfman Jack Baby, show. I'm yours. Baby, I'm yours. From Sandy to Phil. And you're like, this can't be the end of the movie. He has to go see all his friends are okay. But the, everybody's dead. If everyone's dead, I could... I, my problem with the end was, if everyone's dead, all right, cool. But he can't be... Like, that song being played for him by this yeah. dead girl that he'll never see again... Can't be like, oh, yeah, all right, cool. Well, that makes it all good now, yeah. even though my family's dead and all my friends. But I'll just yeah. drive out of here chilling. Because I could see, all right, I could justify, like, if you know, the head vampire syndrome. If right. When he undoes it, if everyone who was turned, you know, LeVar Burton's okay now. But there were people who got strangled, shot. They're still going to be dead. They're still going to be dead. At a minimum. And even when they killed that vampire that was the security guard earlier, I yeah. figured, well... We don't need that guy. Yeah. He sucks anyway. Yeah. I'm still thinking it's going to go back to one. Yeah. No. No. 
I think it might have been that when he turns that song on, he just loses his mind. And that's when he's smiling. It's not an everything is okay smile. It's an I, I'm bonkers. Or maybe he's dead. Maybe we were dead the whole time we were watching it. Yeah, we were dead. <laughs> I, and, and that and the road out of the cemetery yeah. looked a lot like the road into the cemetery. That's true. It's circular. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sealed universe. You're coming back anyway. So, you know, a lot of questions here, a lot of ambiguity. Um, your your dwarf friend did not show did back not up. show up. He, he, the last time we saw him was at the end of the dance video. Yeah, yeah. And that song is, we confirmed it in the credits, it is called Get Dead. Get by, Dead. By Sherry, Dela, Sherry De- Belafonte. I will try to find that. Now, this is a movie that I've, as I said, I've, I think I've watched it every year since 85. Okay. Um, it's now on my rotation. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's good. No, no. But it's highly entertaining. Look, I, I, most of the stuff I like is terrible. Yeah. But I recognize it's terrible. Yeah. And I watch it because it's hilariously yeah. terrible. And this, I can't tell if they know parts of it, you know, if it was a little winking. Because there are some images that are, there's some scary stuff in it, especially for your the little kid. Uh, you know, TV scary. Yeah. The dentist stuff. Some of the makeup scary. But it's not uh, terrifying. There's some there's some humor in Just there. Just the dentist alone. The dentist alone. Yeah. It looks great. It has the Get Dead video. Uh, you know, it takes place on Halloween. It's TV. I think I would recommend people watch this every year. There's a, there's a werewolf, witch, vampire choreographer. Yeah. Zombie. If you can only watch one made-for-TV movie at Halloween, you're going to get the most bang for your buck with this This one. has every, This is a worse... Night of the Creeps. Yeah. Yeah. Night of the Creeps was 86. This kind of predated some of the... Yeah. This, yeah, this is like you you described the plot of Night of the Creeps to two people. One guy went off and made a great version, and one guy was an idiot. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I love it. I watch it every year. Uh, I'll watch it again next year. I'm glad that you... I'm glad that I'm I glad could I show it to it. you for the first time. I'm glad I got to see it. Yeah. I'll never unsee it. That's right. This is going to be in my rotation... Yep. moving forward. Excellent. And I'll try to introduce this to other unwitting victims. You will you will turn them almost into witch vampires for just watching this movie. I'm going to lose some friends over this. Yeah. But, I think that's fair. Know, it's worth it. I gotta, but once you seal the parchment, they'll come back to they'll life. They'll come back to life. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Lamont, any parting Halloween words for people? Uh just make sure you get the right candies. Yeah. You don't want to be the person on the block with the good and plenties. Yeah. Or those uh dots there was always one kid in the group though that everyone would give their good and plenties to who was psyched about it yeah and don't be that kid yeah you don't want to be that kid because they're making fun of you it's true they're not your real friends (laughs) enjoy halloween i mean really do enjoy it you know and don't complain when it's oh there's candy in august yeah there's candy in august yeah yeah okay guess what there's candy all year round and all souls day day of the dead tomorrow november 1st the day after halloween it's half price candy day. Half price candy day. So if you don't get enough, go out and get your own. So enjoy and make sure when you send your kids out, pillowcase. Yep. Uh, costume, whatever they like, but pillowcase. Don't worry. No one's poisoning your stupid kids. No. Don't even so check don't even, it. But if there are some whack snacks in there that somebody made. Yeah. That didn't introduce themselves to you. You have full right to cuss them out. Popcorn balls. Popcorn balls. Like yeah. Yeah. I uh, confession before we end here. I have a pillowcase just for keeping candy in. That's good. And, and I'm 35 years old, and I will, you know, buy half price candy and fill the bag up out of a pillowcase. And for a couple of weeks, I'll just sit and eat candy out of a pillowcase and watch television. I don't see a problem with any of that. Because there's a smell. When you open up that pillowcase, that is unique to the the combination of candies that they need to make into a scented candle. Pillowcase full of candy. Pillowcase full of candies. Yeah, because it's not chocolate. And, it's uh, a mixture. It's like a perfect mixture. At the Christmas at the Christmas tree shops. Yep. Pillowcase full of candies. Yeah, the candles. scented candle. I think we would make pillowcase full of candles. Pill pillow candles. Pillow yeah. candles. I also want to describe someone as a real pillowcase. I don't know what it would mean. My God, that chick's a pillowcase, man. Pillowcase. Yeah, I think we could have described Sandy, the undead cheerleader, as a pillowcase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't want to date Sandy. She chick's a pillowcase, man. Hook up with her. But yeah, you don't, you don't want to date yeah. her. Yeah, no, you want to take her to lookout point. Fall in love. Hopefully, don't get cock blocked by a werewolf. Bring silver. Bring condoms and silver, silver bullets. bullets. Yeah, 
I yeah. think that's I think that's the one bit of advice we've taken away tonight. Always have condoms and silver bullets. Also the name of my band. Condoms, condoms and silver, and bullets. silver bullets. Yeah, they're a little more like a prog rock band. Yeah, they're they were. pretty good. They're pretty good. <laughs> well, Lamont, happy Halloween and happy thank Halloween. you so much for thank doing the show. Thank you for having me. I had a great time. Yet again. Well, welcome. There you go, Lamont Price. I couldn't get Vincent Price, so I got Lamont. Uh, no relation to Vincent. I've actually, although you know what, I've never asked him that. I'm just assuming. And when you assume, you know what happens. So maybe I'll ask him that. I, I, I don't think he's related to Vincent Price, but he does have quite a mustache and uh, always wears a smoking jacket. So that is Lamont Price. That is Halloween. I hope you guys enjoy your Halloween this year. I know that I will. Uh, not to get heavy on the show here, but uh, I know I don't talk about my personal life very often on this show, but. Uh, uh, it's been a it's been a rough year for Ken Reed uh, this year, uh, this summer. My mother passed away uh, under fairly tragic and sudden circumstances that I had to deal with directly uh, in true Halloween fashion. And I sort of just wrapped all that stuff up and I was very, very much looking forward to the fall in New England and the stretch between Halloween and uh, Christmas, which is a which is a fond, happy time in my world. So I needed this Halloween, God damn it, and I got it. Uh, and then I'll be out in uh, LA at the end of January and into February. So you can you can see me out there. So yeah, this was, this was a needed Halloween, and uh, I'm going to enjoy it, and you should too. And also, uh, next month, I will be, actually a little more than a month, in December, I will be at the Northeast Comic Con doing a live TV guidance concert with Annie Potts, and that's just north of Boston. Uh, more details to come. You can sign up for our mailing list at tvguidancecounselor.com, or go on our Facebook page, just search at uh, TV Guidance Counselor, uh, or you can tweet to me at TV Guidance, and as I said before, tvguidancecounselor at gmail.com. Love hearing from you guys. Have a uh, happy and fun Halloween and thank you guys so much for listening once again uh, it truly is a treat and we'll see you next time on TV Guidance Counselor Phil, Phil what kind of ritual? It was something about raising the dead setting free all the demons of hell but nothing happened <laughs> <laughs>